Ich habe das Licht an. The industry of the ocean energy keeps getting bigger and the solutions turn even more unique every time. For instance, this company is innovating the production of green energy, green hydrogen with their incredibly unique kite propulsion system. Let me introduce Ocean Energy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Builder Nation. Today, we are joined by Wolfram Rainers, CEO at Ocean Energy. Welcome, Wolfram. Thank you very much for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Yeah, my name is Wolfram Rainers. I'm the founder and CEO of Ocean Energy. Uh, we are a German company um, uh, out of Stuttgart, Southwest Germany, a, a machine manufacturer you know, with great tradition there. Uh, my background, and I do innovations of pretty much my entire career uh, for almost 30 years by now. First, I was you know, in information technology, also when the internet came up, made myself financially independent went into professional sports, speed sailing, you know, did that with kites, was also successful, was the fastest German uh, 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 sailor, you know, the outright speed sailing record, you know, and came around the entire world using wind and kites, harnessing wind. Well, today I'm back at my desk, you know, in 2012, actually at the World Cup in Le Cat in France, uh, we had a long discussion about energy and kites and how do you harvest it with sails, with turbines. Uh, and this is how this project was was born. You know, we have a, 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 a daughter company in South Africa, in Cape Town, at the Cape of wow. Storm, uh, where we uh, basically test, test our systems. Yeah? So this is... Uh, 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 my background. I mean, we do technical innovations and and protection of intellectual property. Wow, that's that's quite a background. I I definitely did did know. Uh, I mean, I did check that. Uh, first of all, you're already a pro at this thing about you know kiting and everything. It is it is pretty it is pretty amazing. You know, I also know that you have you already have what almost thirty years of experience in this entire. Uh, you know, range of of, uh, of of innovation, right, and entrepreneurship, which is really cool. And we're going to definitely touch about that. But for now, let's delve right into it. Let's delve right into Ocean Energy. Now, we shared a few videos about, about, about your company. We shared them around on social media. However, for any of those who might not have seen the videos, maybe they were just, uh, maybe they, they missed them. Could you please explain to us on a on a general basis what the objective of Ocean Energy is about these about these kite hydrogen ships and and the idea of how to produce this hydrogen on board twenty four seven? Yes, uh, with pleasure, I will do that. Uh, I think the broader concept is is the energy ship, right? Uh, what is an energy ship? I mean, you want to uh, harvest green energy, and I mean, there's a kind of, you know, uh, a, a, a misunderstanding almost, even amongst experts, right? They mm -hmm. think green energy, so green electricity uh, is either not scalable, like hydropower, for instance, right? right. I mean, you have like rivers flowing and and, 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 and and you harness power, but I mean, all the good locations are taken, so you can't actually scale mm -hmm. it more. You can't get, you build more of these power plants or uh, if they are uh, uh, scalable, they are in, they deliver intermittent electricity, like solar right. power, for instance, or wind power, right? So it's, when the sun is up during the day and there's no clouds, you do have power, and in the night or when there's cloud, you don't have. It's mm -hmm. pretty predictable if you do it in in a desert. Um, when you do it with wind, you know it's pretty unpredictable. Sometimes you have wind even in a in a long row, you know, three four days in a row possibly. But then you have also periods of no wind up to two three weeks sometimes. Right, right. Uh, that is actually not a God given. That is not a, a a law of physics or a law of nature because there are regions in the world where you have. A, a constant wind round the clock, permanent strong wind. And that is in certain zones on the open ocean, actually vast zones on the open ocean. Yeah? When, when, when you sail, say, from the United States to Europe or from the United States to, through the Pacific Ocean in the, in the right wind zones, you will find very strong wind round the clock 24 times 7. And this is the concept of the energy ship. You go out there and you harvest these natural uh, power sources uh, 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 with an energy ship. So that, that is the fundamental concept first, right? 
Sam. Right. <clears throat> and then we have the, the topic of kites. Yeah. How do you actually uh, har uh, harvest wind energy? I mean, let's 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 go back a couple of centuries uh, in 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 wind harvesting technologies. Right. <clears throat> they did it with sails. Yeah. First, it was sails, uh, basically an, an area you put up in 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 the sky, and 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 it drives the ship forward. Right, and mm -hmm. then later they came to aerodynamic sails, uh, where you can even tack upwind. The sailors know that you know you can uh, 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 tack uh, even against the wind. You're fully, uh, you can navigate fully wherever you want from one point on the ocean to the other, uh, uh, if, if you want. And then uh, you have the problem of scaling the sails. Right, you couldn't right. make them big, big, big. I mean, if any sailor knows that. You have an optimal cell size. You can't just when you want to get faster and you want to have more energy, you can't just put up more cell. Why? Right. Because you have a mast. Yeah? There's a mast uh, with, mm -hmm. with, which has torque at, at its foundation. And then there is the, the, the method of turbines, well known. Yeah? You also have a mast and you put a, tur a, a right. rotors up in, in, in the wind stream. Same problem scaling you, know, you can't make these just endlessly big because you have this torque at the, at the foundation and then there is a less known technology to harvest wind which is kites yeah? so it's basically an, an aerodynamic wing you put up in the air it's heavier mm -hmm. than air <clears throat> it flies aerodynamically like an airplane right. and it's tethered to the ground that makes up a kite. Yeah. It exercises on the ground a translational linear force. There's no mast. There's no no no, no uh, uh, torque because right. there's no mast. And <clears throat> these kites you can scale beyond any theoretical limits. Right. That is that is the concept with kites. So we combine these two technologies: energy ships and 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 and, and kite driven. And here you are. You are at the kite driven ship. Uh, that you can scale in its power uh, uh, tremendously. Now, right. you. <clears throat> so, if, if if this is kinetic power, Sam, uh, at, at at this stage, I mean, as wind, wind is air molecules. They have a certain mass. Mm -hmm. They move it's kinetic energy. You capture them with your kite. You you translate that into in, in into a linear, uh, directed force, and, and this force you can uh, uh, use to drive generators. So you produce electricity, right. electrons. Yeah? And right. now you're on the open ocean. You got a lot of electricity. <laughs> How do you store it? <laughs> That's the next problem, right? It so is definitely. In, 2000, <laughs> in 2012, when we started this 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 project, now I first thought of battery ships, kite battery ships. Uh, the whole ship is a mm -hmm. huge battery, right? And, and, and you create electricity and you store it in form of batteries. And then we did the math around it, and you realize, in this strong wind, you know, your battery would be full within a within a day, within twenty four hours. Wow! Your full. Uh, that's that's the amount of energy you actually create, right? I mean, you you could dock such a ship, and you have a huge, huge battery. I mean, uh, uh, delivering a lot of power, a lot of megawatt hours. Right. But it's not feasible. Because you have to get in and out all the time. So you basically lose half of your... You have permanent wind, but you lose half of your time by getting in and out of the harbor, more or less. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not viable, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. So you need to find a different way of storing it. Today, it's I think it's, it's pretty much well-known. Hydrogen technology, 12 years ago, it was not. Um, <clears throat> so-called power to X technology. So you got power, electricity, and you got X. And X can be all sort of things. Mm -hmm. It can be hydrogen. It can be other forms of what they call e-fuels, electro right. fuel, electricity-based fuels. Right. So you have electricity. You do uh, electrolysis. You con so you you have anode, cathode. We all learned that in school once, right? You dip it into water. You 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 put a voltage to it, and yep. and and and. and uh, one of the uh, elect electrodes, uh, you have oxygen, and the other one, you, you create hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And oxygen, it's like a fresh forest, right? Fresh air you can release into the atmosphere. It's a very desirable sub substance. Uh, and then you have hydrogen, and hydrogen you can collect. And hydrogen is an excellent uh, energy carrier. And when you burn hydrogen, you can burn it in, in other you know, combustion engines. You can in, burn it cold, so-called cold burning in fuel cells where you create electricity. 
and what comes out of that is water, pure water. So you take oxygen out of the atmosphere and hydrogen, it becomes H2O. And desirable substance, that's your exhaust. <laughs> so when you right. burn hydrogen, your exhaust is pure water. Uh, very desirable. Uh, and that is what we use on these kite hydrogen ships. So we, we actually store hydrogen on board of these ships as a as an energy carrier as a, as a, as, a, as a substance that, that that carries this wind energy inside mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak right or you transform it to e-fuels you know, all, all sorts of e-fuels mm -hmm. it's basically once you have hydrogen you can transform it to anything you can buy at the gas station at the petrol station right yeah, please come here. Right. This actually uh, does drive one question for me. Now, you already explained uh, how you take advantage of this of, of this kite uh, energy, you know, this linear force that it generates, the, how they have no mass. Now, my question to you is, how did you first actually start or, or, or prototype a device, a turbine, a, a hydrokinetic turbine that would es essentially power an electrolysis, uh, you know, uh, reaction, right? on board like my, that that blows my mind the fact that it is on board the fact that it is doing it very constantly right how long did it take you to actually get to that point to make it you know sustainable self-sustainable in that sense okay let's take a step back and see where we are <clears throat> we have not built such an energy ship yet mm -hmm. huh? we are a startup company operating for almost 12 years the first five years or so i spent I spent calculating. I thought, right. is this, I mean, is, is a magnificent idea, right? I mean, you have like two thirds of, of the world's surface is, is ocean. And I mean, half right. of it about has, has this permanent wind on it. I mean, and it's unused, right? If you, if you know, I'm today on a ship, if you sail over the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean in these wind zones, <clears throat> I mean, what you see once a week, another watercraft at the horizon, right? Mm -hmm. That is how empty it is. Yeah? So you have all that space. You can scale these mobile power plants. So is, is that science fiction or is, is that real? Or mm -hmm. is it is it a dream or, or so? So I spent calculating mathematics, physics. I, I did basically, I, I, I pulled out all my phys math and, and, and physics and chemistry. <laughs> out of my school knowledge and and, and, from, and from university and, and so forth, uh, dive deep into it. And then after like two or three, four years now, I realized uh, this is a real business opportunity. This mm -hmm. is not science fiction. This is not a dream, right? And then we started to build, I mean, I was a professional kite surfer and, 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 right. and, and speed sailor at that time. So we built a prototype boat, equipped it with a kite, equipped it with measurement technology, and and we did tests, right? How much power do we get out of how much wind? What is the traction force? We did not have any generators then, Sam. Right. At that point in time, right? the, the rest was was, was mathematics. And, yes. And and we realized uh, this is a real opportunity. And then uh, we started also. I mean, you need to protect your ideas, right? And I mean, I'm particularly. I have a lot of experience that from my business career as an innovator like when, when you do innovations you can't just go ahead and, and do things i mean they will invariably steal it from you. <laughs> you have to protect it <laughs> so you keep a lot secret what you can what you can't keep right. secret you basically patents right so we, we started drafting patents about particularly crucial portions of this of this kite driven mm -hmm. energy mobile plant right <clears throat> and and then we started building building the machine the kite propulsion system right look when when i when i told you before a kite as opposed to a mast based system like a turbine or a sail uh -huh. can be scaled beyond any limit it is all these ma magnificent properties right we were we, we are beating speed sailing records with kites. We won competitions with kites. The sailors were slower than we mm -hmm. were. Nobody came to the idea of to come with a turbine, by the way, <laughs> the turbine-driven ship. Right? That is right. way too inefficient. Right? So we knew the kites, but but uh, as much as this missing mast uh, 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 gives you advantage, it is also your, your major disadvantage because you have to keep that wing up in the air at all times. Right. Day, night, bad wind, good wind, strong wind, weak <laughs> wind, gusty wind, rain, hail, 
combination of all these and so forth. This right. thing must not come down, right? This is very, very difficult. I mean, the kite surfers uh, may listen in today. They know that you know? once the kite uh, is up in the air, it's all easy in the sport. But when it, when, when it comes down and the kite crashes, they have a problem. And right. even more so uh, will our ships have. So we, we built that, that machine that uh, keeps the kite up in the air in all conditions at once. And then secondly, it has to, to, to be able to, to handle these, these huge forces that that kite uh, 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 basically extracts from that kinetic mm -hmm. energy. It's, I mean, you, you deal with enormously high, high forces, right? Uh, which later translate into megawatt electricity and megawatt hydrogen or megawatt methanol or, or ammonia or, or any other e-fuel, uh, gasoline, right. uh, uh, um, kerosene, and so on. But <clears throat> it's difficult. Uh, and so we started building these machines, protecting these machines, patenting these machines uh, since 2018. And, and since 2020, we fly mm -hmm. them in Cape Town at our kite test center on land in prototypes. That's now the fourth test season we are in. Oh. Uh, and we have built the fourth generation of these kite propulsion systems. Uh, and, and I mean, on the way getting there, I mean, you deal with an enormous amount of technical problems. I mean, you have no right. idea, Sam. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like, problems that seem to be unsurmountable, partly, right? Like, I mean, in 2015, you know, I re recall very well when I went near Zurich, Switzerland, to, to, to a, a uh -huh. technical polycon or a technical university, you know, a, a professor dealing with kites. And, and I was sitting there and he explained to me at great length and he said, <clears throat> they were also building kite systems and, and, and energy systems. And he said, uh, you want to build a textile kite and we, we call it a composite textile kite. He said, that composite. will not okay. work. Yeah. We have also, I mean, in my doctoral dissertation 10 years ago, I was an expert in, in composite textiles. It will not work. It's not strong enough. Wow. You know, we, built, we built today hard wings, hard kites. You know, they are out of aluminum or, or glass fiber wow. or plastics. And so anything else is stupid. I mean, you may imagine I, I was sitting there <laughs> <laughs> uh, embarrassed. <laughs> I did. I, I was not so much motivated to to, to uh -huh. tell him my entire story anymore. I thought, okay, hopefully this guy doesn't find out that I'm on the blind alley. <laughs> and and, and so, but, but then we went back. You know, we went back to the to, to the science. And 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 in those days was still the space shuttle. You remember that mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. American um, uh, space shuttle. And right. when the space shuttle lands with a very high a speed by the way i think right out of my, my head now i think it's 550 kilometers per hour i was it 300 miles per hour so right. it, it comes down on that runway and and then comes this brake parachute which which opens mm -hmm. and you have at that moment when it opens i'm an enormous shock load and 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 i don't know mm -hmm. those who who know about space uh, technologies? I don't know every kilogram of mass you you transport into space is tremendously expensive. So, so right, right, right. Light. <laughs> <laughs> you carry it all the way up into into the orbit, and 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 then you bring it down. And I mean, every kilogram counts. And then you have yes. a shock load, which is only there for a second or two, but it can't rip in the shock load, right? And mm -hmm. and and we're asking ourselves, how how do they do it? Yeah. And, and 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 this technology inspired us. And today we build kites. I mean, for three years already, we built kites uh, uh, with s not dissimilar technology with, um, I mean, uh, 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 materials that were not even known 15 years ago. Right. Yeah? Like HMPE, high modular weight polyethylene. That is synthetic fibers, you know, a fiber with the, with the same diameter as, as, as a steel rope, for instance, eh? has okay. like can, can hold forces 15 times more than, than, than steel. And that oh. has a fraction of the weight. You know, that is that is HMPE. Yeah? Right, uh, right, right, right. And, and the synthetic fiber of, and we use these kind of materials, very light, very, very strong. And we, and today I can tell this professor there in in Zurich, <laughs> you are wrong. You are actually wrong. Now, our our, our uh, uh, kites, they hold like 10 times more uh, 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 load than your 
uh, aluminium wings. <laughs> it only took ten years. Pardon it me? only took ten. It only took ten years, but hey, you can tell him already. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it takes time, but that's just one example of many of technical problems you encounter. And of course, you find people. Uh, I mean, intellectually high-powered people, people uh, uh, you know, from also venture capital funds, investors, mm -hmm. they tell you it will not work. I right. promise you it will not work. No, <laughs> I'm a physicist. I'm a chemist. I'm an engineer, whatever. We have a lot of money and brilliant people. It will not work, they tell you. And you right. sit there and you say, no, I'm going to make this work. And I mean, we have, to give you an idea, our company, we employ some 25 engineers and technicians mm -hmm. and i mean brilliant brilliant people and they sit there day and night and they find a solution and uh, today we can say we have on land still on land sam we all have right. on land resolved all the technical barriers and issues including wow. including scaling we know how to build this system big beyond a hundred megawatts right But the biggest wind turbines today, offshore wow. wind turbines, they, they arrive at nine megawatts. You know, that they sometimes deliver, right. has to say in all fairness. You know? and, 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 and we will build in, in the next 10 years energy ships beyond 100 megawatts, delivering round the clock 24 times seven. You know? Right. I mean, 32 times more energy than, than uh, over the year and per square meter a wind turbine can do. This is uh, the, the track we are on. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a matter of funds and money and time to make this reality. We, ne we know today it does work. We have proven it right. in our land-based tests. So that's uh, it was a long answer to, to an innocent short question. <laughs> hey, no, that's that's what we're here for. I really like these very deeply, very broad answers. Thank you very much for that, Wolfram. Now I do have one, uh, a couple, a couple last questions, uh, but I'm gonna just stick to one because I really want to know your answer. But I mean, we want to keep this short, right? Uh, this uh, this question that I have for you is in the space of actual applications, right? Like when you already have these, uh, when you already launch these these uh, ships fully usable, I can I can really imagine that. Of course, it's going to be very useful for maybe transatlantics or maybe you know uh, uh, perhaps. Ships that are going to be in sale for a very long period of time, they're going to be able to generate the energy in store, right? However, do you think this has any other type of applications? For example, maybe that it can eventually turn into sort of some some sort of um, I don't know, for submarines, I can think, right, that you can deploy this and then bring it back down to continue without having to actually get back in touch and and touch base, for example, right? Or maybe for the military or for or for any other of these uh, over these applications. Where do you see this? being applied just beyond what you would typically go for in a like a transatlantic or a big ship our kite propulsion system you're referring to uh, yes supposedly right yes so the, 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 the prime application is the energy ship right mm -hmm. getting energy green energy green fuels actually <laughs> on the open ocean out of sight where nobody feels disturbed Uh, with no limits to scaling uh, and completely emission free. I mean, you bring back fuel. Nobody is disturbed. You know, not in, not in my backyard problems. <laughs> so it comes <laughs> back. You know, no animal, no plant, no human is disturbed by it. You bring right. fuel right. back to the harbor, and then you can use it as we do it today. You know, in your motor car, in your airplane, in your ship, in your uh, industry, mm -hmm. and, and, and and so on and so on. That's that's the crown, the prime application. If we do have other applications. We see other applications too. We are actually there's a big demand. Uh, for like trans-ocean crossing, for instance, of, of, mm -hmm. of, of motor yachts. You know, if today, you know, like the, I mean, it's usually wealthy people, if they have an, a, 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 a super yacht, you know, they don't right. have the range to cross the ocean. Uh, uh, and if they want to have like their, their summer holiday in, in France, in Saint-Tropez, in the Mediterranean, and their winter holiday in the Caribbean, uh, they, they have to load their super yacht on, right. on, on back ship to, to transport it and in the future they can have such a tight proportion system you know, unobtrusively in, in, it's in stock, stored in a box and open it up and you press the button and out comes the kite and then they can do a trans-ocean crossing over the ocean within th three weeks completely emission-free 
and fuel free. You know, you don't have to mm -hmm. buy hundreds of thousands of tons of fuel <laughs> and, 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 and take the blame that you are, uh, have emissions and, and you disturb uh, the, the environment, etc. So that, that is one application we have. We have another application to electrify motorboats, powerboats, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which is like like electric cars. I mean, today, of course, if you ask Elon Musk, he says you have to have electric cars, mm -hmm. but the user doesn't want them. Why? Or many don't want them because it doesn't have the range. Eh? The battery goes flat. and Right, and right, right. And you stop your car and you're sitting there and you don't know what to do on the, uh, if you're on a motorboat. This is disastrous. If you run a battery yes. flat, you can actually lose your boat or your life. Right. And so yes. you need an external power source on, on board. And that is where our system can be deployed too. So you, uh, you obviously need mm -hmm. wind, right? But then yes. you can charge your batteries uh, uh, when you have wind. Uh, 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 and then when there's no wind, you know, you, you, you use the, the charged power. Right. To drive an electric motor and there's other applications of, of that uh, but uh, these are i think the, the key the key yes. applications uh, with maximum value for customers and for for, for all of us huh? right well thank you very much for sharing that i could definitely keep talking about this for a very long time it's very interesting but i want to keep it short uh so i just have one last question all right and in this question, I want to really dive into your history of 25 plus years of, of entrepreneurship, of innovation. You're already a, a, a well-renowned and successful inventor of, of many things, right? So my question to you is, what advice would you give to any young entrepreneur, any young scientist, any young engineer out there who is maybe thinking or, or, have, or has an idea and wants to start their own path? In, in with with their own company what advice do you have for them <laughs> that's a difficult one sam i mean sometimes <laughs> i think being an innovator and an inventor and and really doing your own things and pursuing your ideas and, and your creativity i mean that is a long and stony path in particular in the beginning so <laughs> sometimes you, uh, <laughs> The first ten years that I did it, I wished <laughs> I wished I didn't do it. Um, you know, you're like others. You know, they go in employment and they drive nice cars, and and you're there right. and, and and count your last dollars or euros uh, and so. <laughs> but then you know, today I think differently. Of course, you know, I had my successes and 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 I know how to deal also with with. I know uh, when you get thrown back, that happens. Right. Uh, you have you have mishaps, you have non-successes, uh, you have opponents, and all sorts of things. On the other hand, you know, I mean, if I could choose today, I would say yes, I do it again. Why? For, for two reasons, actually. The first reason is I do every day what I want to do. I pursue my creative ideas, and I want to make them happen, with, but with great perseverance, right? You need that right. perseverance. You, you need to decide for yourself. Do you have that perseverance? And 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 then you can do it. And, um, yeah, and, and the, the second advice is uh, many people have many ideas, eh? and, and they, they don't Ooh. actually don't lack ideas, but you need to have the drive to put your ideas into action. Right, you, you will like you did your your station. I mean, you put it into action. Now sit mm -hmm. down in the morning and start doing it, and don't don't think only about it. And and in the end, be uh, unhappy because you did you you didn't do what you actually always wanted to do. And I think that is the problem <laughs> of most people. <laughs> they regret that they never did what they actually wanted to do. Right. Yeah, yeah that is that is completely true. People tend to to look back and say oh i wish i had done it on time right uh but yes i definitely agree with you thank you for two advices we got a two for one this time so that's great <laughs> thank you very much for that war from i believe although i would wish to continue this conversation a lot longer i want to be respectful of your time so thank you very much Wolfram, for joining us today uh before i let you go do you have any social media handles that you want to share with us where can we find you on ocean energy well, you can go on our website, uh, oceanergy.com, uh, to get more information. Uh, also, you know, we do mostly technology development. I mean, we, I put every 
euro every dollar into technology mm -hmm. development not into marketing so this is not the brand new stuff on there but it will give you a, a good idea fair idea what we do that we also have a, a linkedin page i think also Absolutely. not particularly well maintained <laughs> and that's pretty much i mean <laughs> Pretty much what we have. Now we are engineers and, and technicians, right? Right. Um, uh, that is that is what we need to do. Uh, we will soon launch. Uh, by when we all, we live off investment, right? In of investors. Course. And I invite if if any investors listen to that, you know, I invite you to contact us. Uh, but also, what we will do shortly, we will do a crowdfunding campaign, and possibly oh. you want to. Uh, 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 report about it, you know, where 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 normal people can put, you know, hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars in in such a project, uh, just for their peace of mind to say, I uh, do something good for our planet and the environment, just to see it to, live, yeah, and also, of course, to to earn a multiple. Uh, uh, you know, every hundred dollars can in the end be ten thousand, hundred thousand, and and so like like that is with groundbreaking innovations, and the kite I agree. pilot ship is such a groundbreaking innovation. I agree. I mean, I I definitely want when I came across this, I was really really interested in, in getting to learn a lot more about it. Thank you very much uh, for for sharing everything that you have shared with us today. Uh, we will definitely be be keeping an eye on that crowdfunding that you just mentioned, so we can share it around and uh, we'll hopefully make this this kite propulsion system the full device just be already out there in the ocean. Thank you very much for that. Now, for everybody else out there, remember that we have a lot more interesting information, interesting articles, and more interviews directly on our website, buildernation.io, and as buildernation across all of social media. We're gonna love to hear from you. Thank you very much for being part of this community. We're going to see you the next episode. And Wolfram, thank you very much for joining us. This was genuinely a really interesting talk. Thank you very much. Ben, thank you so much for inviting me and for selecting you know, small, interesting topics. Uh, it's it's uh, great, great uh, what you free journalists do. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. When building the future is your priority, tedious procurement processes should be last on your list. The problem is that purchasing data is scattered across spreadsheets, receipts, emails, and messages. Tracking it all sucks and makes it easy to commit mistakes. Introducing the Control Hub way, the all-in-one purchasing software for hardware companies. Buying parts, services, or office supplies? Submit a quick purchase request to buy from your list of approved vendors or buy from a new provider. Buying from approved vendors is even easier. Import your shopping cart directly into your purchase request using our checkout integrations. When the order is ready, submit it for approval. We'll ping all pre-designated approvers both via Control Hub's website, email, and Slack notifications for a faster turnaround. If you need a PO, we got you. Generate it in one click. Online purchase, boom, virtual card. Do an automatic three-way match, pay invoices, and sync everything live with QuickBooks or NetSuite. Purchasing just got a lot easier.
Control Hub. Get back to building. <laughs>